Today, we're heading to Modern to see if we can scam some wins by emptying our opponents and burning them out of the game with 8-Rack. So here is our scam rack deck, and like any good 8-Rack deck, we start off with six racks. So I guess it's not technically eight rack, but that's the name of the deck, so bear with me. So these cards, if you've never seen them before, they reward us for getting our opponent out of cards in hand. Shrieking Affliction, if our opponent has one or less cards in hand, our opponent takes three damage on their upkeep. The Rack, if our opponent has zero cards in hand, our opponent takes three on their upkeep. If they have one card, they take two. If they have two cards, they take one. Any more than that, it does nothing. So the goal of our deck is pretty simple. Stack these cards up on the battlefield and then destroy our opponent's hand so they get burnt out of the game. We even have Urza Saga to find the rack. We can also get a Pithing Needle to shut down the one ring, which is really good against our deck because it refills our opponent's hand and turns off all of our rack effects. So that's kind of the eight rack part of the deck, or I guess six rack part of the deck. Then we have the scam part of the deck. And I feel like this is how to brew in modern in 2023. You can do a lot of cool things in modern, like try to win with 1994 classic OG Stuffy Dal Art the Rack, but to get there, you gotta play some of the busted Modern Horizons cards, like Urza Saga to find the rack, her grief to scam our opponent. So I'm sure you know where this is going. Like the scam thing, turn one, you evoke a grief to thought seize your opponent, and then you feign death or undying malice to put it back into play. So you double thought seize on turn one. For our purposes, that's a lot of cards out of our opponent's hand to turn on our racks, but we actually hilariously have a better scam target than grief. What we really wanna be scamming with in this deck is Augur of Skulls, Pauper All-Star Augur of Skulls. So Augur of Skulls, a two mana one one that has an ability where on our upkeep we can sack it and make target player discard two cards. So what we really wanna be doing with our Fain Death and Undying Malice is, is playing Augur of Skulls, go to our upkeep, uh, we use a Fain Death on our Augur of Skulls or an Undying Malice, we sack it, our opponent discards two cards, then it comes back into play, then we immediately sack it again, our opponent discards two more cards, that's four cards out of our opponent's hand, which combined with our other discard effects should mean our opponent's pretty much empty handed and just dying to our racks and our shrieking afflictions. As far as the rest of our discard, Liliana, consistent discard and removal. Wrench Mine, as long as our opponent doesn't have an artifact in hand, it's a discard two for two. Thought Seize, you know what that one does. Funeral Charm can snipe a Ragavan or make our opponent discard at instant speed. So it's good once our opponent's empty handed. We can do this on our opponent's draw step, make them discard whatever they drew for their turn. Otherwise, we got an Orcish Bowmasters because it's pretty busted. Do the Voidwalker, very important in our deck because we're making our opponent discard. So if our opponent wants cards in their graveyard, we could be helping them. But Voidwalker just puts those cards to exile, so they're going to be harmless. Otherwise, Fatal Push for some removal. Mana base, we talked about Urza Saga. Also got some Mishra's Factory. Urborg turns all the colorless sources into black mana. In the sideboard, some more removal. Chalice for the Cascade decks. More graveyard hate since we're making our opponent discard. Damping Seer Break Ice, good against Tron style decks, messing with our opponent's mana. And that is 8 rack, except it's now a scam. That's our deck for today, so let's jump into a modern league and see if the power of Augur of Skulls can actually make 8-Rack a deck again in modern. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoy it. And I'll be back in a bit for the wrap-up. Need some magic cards? Well, you can snag them from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, over at cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish. It is scam rack time. Uh, ooh, ooh, oh, this hand. Okay, so no rack. But, 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 we do have the scam star and run the play, so, uh, keep. We could use a rack. That's the one thing we're missing is a rack effect, but we can empty our opponent's hand pretty quick. So I think what we do is grief pitching, eh, whatever, undying malice, feign death. So let's play a schwamp, uh, grief, feign death. Take a peek, see what our opponent's got going on over there. Ah, uh, Merc Tide, eh? Trying to Merc Tide us, are ya? Uh, so let's see, how do we do this? We don't really care about Ragavan. How much do we care about Merc Tide? So I think we have to take the Bolt with one of these. All right, let's take the Bolt, because that's gonna kill our, our Grief. Undying Malice the Grief. It's gonna die in return. Now what do we take is the real question. So if we take Expressive Iteration, our opponent's gonna turn one Preordain. Well, we could take Preordain. I think we actually take Preordain. All right. I mean, so the risk here is our opponent could get to the Merc Tide. Right now, they only have one land. If they play Ragavan, we get to Bowmasters it. If they don't play Ragavan, we probably still leave up Bowmasters. Ragavan. So only real question is, can we win before 
Can we win before they uh, manage to get a Merc Tide down? So let's build Masters, kill a Ragavan. <laughs> okay. Uh, turn to kill, technically. Oh, uh, Moto has been going through some wild times this week. It keeps resetting all my settings. I do not know why. All right, so opponent's playing Merc Tide. What do we, what do we want to deal with the, the Mercsters? Uh, Voidwalker seems good. Fatal Push could be okay. The question is, what do we, what do we got? So Pithy Needle can go. We're going to be getting racks with our Urza Sagas, I think. We definitely want Voidwalkers. Do we want, hmm, do we want Ley Lines? I don't know if we want Ley Lines. That might be too, too much. Because we don't really have much that's bad. Like, there's not a ton we want to cut. I could see bringing more Fatal Pushes. I guess we need to keep our opponent from getting to the point of playing a Merc Tide because... I guess Liliana can kill it, but that does seem like the the trickiest card for us to kill. Maybe we go like one Liliana, one one Feign Death on the draw, try it like that. Well, let's just keep doing that because that was, we didn't even get to the, the eight rack part. We just <laughs> full on, <laughs> full on scammed him. Apparently Double Thoughtsy is pretty, pretty good. Oh, we're gonna keep this, I think. Yeah, his hand isn't really close to any scammy stuff. We can kill a lot of one drops. Ugh. All right, Mishra's bobble. That's unfortunate. Mills another bobble. Opponent cracks a bobble, takes a peek. We do need to draw land. Opponent passes, draws a card. We draw a land, please. I mean, we do have two turns to find one. The rack. Let's fatal push the RC, pass the turn. All right, land. Land magic gods, land. Opponent, spire bluff. Considers. Ah, they're getting close to Murktide and Preordains. All right, well, we're definitely Thought Seizing. We're hoping we draw land so we can Thought Seize plus something else, but we do need to make sure our opponent doesn't have a Murktide. Murktide would be bad here. Opponent, one on top. All right, we draw land. Voidwaka. All right, well, Thought Seize you. Well, I think we're dead. That's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two Merc Tides. Oh, we had a hand that could be a Merc Tide, but not a hand that can be two Merc Tides. I am not sure what we do from here. Opponent, Merc Tide Regent. Well, this might be the turn three kill for our opponent. Now we do draw the land. Oh, God, so late. All right, well, we will pass the turn. So I guess our hope is pass the turn. If our opponent plays something, we kill it. And then if we draw a land, we can try to Liliana away the Merc Tide is our best bet. We do need to hit the land like this turn. Opponent, Dragon Rage, Shanala. And all right, so we will Bowmasters, kill the DRC. If we draw land here, we kind of have a chance. We kind of have a chance. There will be another Merc Tide coming. All right, opponent kills the Bowmasters. But we kill the Dragon Rage Channeler. Wait, do you have, do they draw another instant speed spell? All right, gets a tap land. So we kill the, we kill the DRC. How about a land? A grief. Play Voidwalker. Grief. Shrieking affliction. No scam available. Oh, there's also a fury. Okay, uh, take the Merc Tide. Pass the turn. I mean, in th or a hit for one pass the turn. In theory, we're still drawing live to a land for Liliana because we got rid of the second, the second Merc Tide, which means if we go land Liliana, our opponent's kind of out of threats. Worst case, I guess we can Voidwalker to play the Merc Tide just to just have a blocker for a turn. All right, opponent passes. Last card's just Fury. Oh, and it's a land. Okay, we got a shot. We got a shot, Liliana. Take it down. We have to take down, right? Ugh. Yeah, all right. Take it down. Get rid of the Merc Tide. Go to combat. Wait, so what do we have exiled with counters? Just the two Merc Tides. Yeah, I guess we just attack with both. Our opponent hitting a land here would be less than ideal. Because then they get to Fury, Wrath, or Board. So we hit our opponent to 14. We really need to, like, fade a land for a turn. Wow, if we win this, I will be shocked. Opponent. Spire Bluff would be okay. We would accept a Spire Bluff canal. Okay, that's that's actually kind of fine. Like, it's annoying. They get to wrath our board, but our opponent's out of cards and we still have a rack in hand. And we still have a fatal push. And we've gone through double Murktide. So our board is empty. But technically, we're the one with the clock now. Augur of Skulls. All right, play Augur. 
Get in there, Pumper All Star. <laughs> are we are we actually gonna win this? Is there a chance that we win this? Play the Rack. So our opponent's taking three a turn. Kind of four if we get in with the Augur. Well, we'll see what our opponent finds. Opponent. Expressive iteration. This feels like when Murktide usually draws expressive iteration and then I cry. Passing. Okay. We draw a swamp. Get in with the auger, hit you for one. Play the land while we are close past the turn. Opponent cracks the fetch. Down to nine. Down to seven. Oh, come on. Is the rack going to get there? Are we going to rack him? Are we going to scam rack him? It is kind of working. Opponent thinking, passing. You know what would be nice is a discard spell. I would take a wrench mine right about now. Okay, uh, play a rack. That's actually really good. Go to combat, get in with the auger. So uh, new plan, we're gonna hit our opponent for one and we are going to set an upkeep stop and uh, we're gonna sack this auger and get our opponent empty handed now that we have two racks and that, I think we actually win this opponent. Down to six, opponent untaps. They take two, down to four, which should mean this auger of skulls. Auger of skulls of all things is unbeatable. Opponent pump fakes. Thinking about casting something. The problem with casting something is that means you got less cards in hand. All right. Another Merc died. Number three. There's bad news, opponent. I got bad news for your friend. I got bad news for your friend. We got an upkeep stop set. Upkeep. Auger. Sack it. Empty handed. Oh, scam rack. We scam racked him. We, whoa, oh, opponent. Lightning bolt. You better knife. If you have two lightning bolts, I'm gonna puke. Oh no, please no. Okay, Ooh, unholy heat, almost. Almost, but we'll play a swamp and then we'll uh, we'll pass the turn to you, opponent. We'll pass the turn to you and your lethal murktide regent. Oh no! <laughs> we have some racks. <laughs> I can't believe we beat that murktide. I cannot believe we beat that murktide. When we thought seized with one land and saw the two murktides, I thought we were pretty close to 0% to win that game. Like literally very close to 0% to win that game, but uh, the power of the rack, the power of the rack comes through in 2023. Uh, sweet, sweet, sweet. Uh, Kahira A, but we will keep. The only question is, what do we pitch? Like, we're doing the scam thing. What do we, what do we pitch? And we even have the Urza Saga to get a, to get a rack. So let's play the Swamp. Probably Thought Seize, right? Is it Thought Seize? We could pitch the Bowmaster. So opponent's Kahira. Elementals or the One Ring. Maybe we keep the Bowmasters. You know what? We already have two Thought Seizes with the Grief. Let's let's pitch the Thought Seize. I think. Uh, so Grief, pitch the Thought Seize. Take a take a little peek. A little peek at the opponent's hand over there. What are we What are we doing, opponent? Oh God. Okay. So it's full on control. Well, we will take a Lauren Revealed. All right. How good is Counterspell Tron in 2023? That is the new question. <laughs> Grief returns. Wow, our opponent's hand is literally just three counter spells. Uh, we'll take the ley line binding. We'll pass the turn. Okay. Well, opponent. <laughs> three counter spells, eh? Opponent plays a land passes. We draw another Fane Death. We're going to play in Urza's Saga. And we're going to run out this Bowmasters while our opponent stepped down because we know they have three counter spells. Hit you to 19, hit you to 15. Fame Death is actually not the worst straw. One of the ways our opponent can get out of this is a sweeper. Okay, they get rid of the Bowmasters. The downside is I guess they do have a lot of exile base removal, don't they? Ooh, Liliana. Ooh, Liliana. Well, play Urborg. Oh, they're just gonna discard counters. Yeah, I think we'd rather, I think we'd rather Urza Saga, honestly, than, I think we'd rather Urza Saga than Liliana. Wow, opponent scoops it up. <laughs> Did yeah that hand for our opponent once they got scammed the triple counter spell all we have to do is not play things <laughs> all we got to do is not play things and we're good well we can go on the funeral charm probably go up a brutality I guess and just run it like that how good is void waka I guess we could scam like a Teferi. We could bring in the other brutality. Although brutality is mostly just a duress. Yeah, let's let's just run it like that. I think we got most of our good control stuff in our in our main deck already. Well, that went better than I expected. <laughs> I mean, I guess if you do the scam thing on turn one, you probably just win. What a format. What a world. What a world scam rack. Who would have thought? I think this is. Oh, do we rah, 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 rah. Uh, this hand is a little a little sketchier. I mean, it's not horrible. Four lands is many. None of them do cool things. I think we, I mean, Bowmasters is okay. Grief is slow. I think we mulligan. 
Sand is not super exciting, but we have a Thoughtseize. I mean, Thoughtseize into Bowmasters. Urza Saga does some things. Oh, but it plays a Scalding Tarn. And I guess, like, Augur is still a good scam piece, so it keeps our Fiendess relevant. Well, Thoughtseize, you. How many counter spells in hand this time? Uh, all right. Counter spell, binding, one ring. Well, I think we just take the one ring. Yes, we have Bowmasters to punish it. I don't think that's, uh, guaranteed. <laughs> it's still risky because remember, we are an eight rack deck. Like our goal is to get our opponent out of cards to burn them out with the rack and letting our opponent draw with the one ring would uh, work against that goal. All right, opponent passing. Well, uh, sometimes you draw two Urza Sagas and win. That's a, uh, that's a thing that could happen. Well, playing Urza Saga, pass the turn. See if our opponent has answers for it. We'll definitely try to flash in this Bowmasters at some point. We're kind of okay with it eating a counter though. Actually, you know what? We don't have to have it eat a counter. Let's flash in the Bowmasters, ping ya. Opponent untaps. Breeding pool passes. All right, ooh, Undying Malice. All right, tick up the Urza Saga. Play a land, go to combat, attack our opponent. We'll see what our opponent does. There is a world here where if our opponent taps down, all right, opponent did not tap down. So we're just gonna pass and do Urza Saga stuff. If they tap down, there's, I think, an argument for, wow, they're just gonna get rid of the Bowmaster. If they tap down, I think there's an argument in going for the scam play there, but think and pass it. Well, let's make a construct. Untap, draw. Just make a construct? Yeah, let's just make a construct. Make a construct. Yeah, we'll take the rack for now, I think. Take the rack. Go to combat, do some attacking. We could have taken a pithy needle for the one ring, which is something we're scared of, but I think we wait. Let's just play another Urza Saga and see if we can, see if we can get the Karnstruct win. Opponent. All right, there's a land. Do you have the one ring? Supreme Verdict. All right, so board is down for now. We untap. We draw another Urza Saga. Well, I think we just play an Urborg and run out of grief. Take the prismatic ending, leave. <laughs> Boy, our opponent is really good at drawing counter spells and those counter spells, I mean, I guess they're a buffer in their hand for having cards for the rack, but uh, they're not actually very effective. It doesn't seem like opponent scries to the bottom. Desperation mode. Do you find an answer for our grief? They get Kahira to have an extra card in hand, opponent passes. Another rack. Well, let's uh, make a construct. Get a rack, play an Urza Saga, play another rack, hit ya. Well, opponent's gotta be careful about not running out of cards here. They're uh, kinda in trouble, down to six. So the racks don't do anything yet. We gotta get our opponent less than three cards in hand, but if our opponent ever gets an opponent, scoops it up, Racktron, Bestron. <laughs> Wait, we're killing people with the rack in 2023. Is the rack back thanks to uh thanks to <laughs> thanks to scam? I feel like this is I feel like this is modern brewing in 2023. Like modern brewing in 2023 in the era of modern horizons is can I do a super cool unique thing with the modern horizons card? So this is like I would say a pretty cool, unique thing. You don't see the rack. Eight racks like hasn't been a deck in forever. Uh, so can you bring back eight rack with the help of scamming people with, with grief? Because you gotta be doing some powerful Modern Horizons uh, two thing to keep up. But in the context of doing that powerful Modern Horizons two thing, I mean, you can slam a bunch of cards from 1994, get them all on the battlefield, some uh, OG stuffy doll action and just burn them out of the game and make them scoop. So, huh, well, not bad, 2-0, sweet, sweet. I think we keep this. We have two thought seizes. The pithy needle's awkward. We have the grief, but we don't have the scam piece at the moment. This Urza Saga is actually kind of clunky. So we have two things we would like to draw. Just drawing a land that's not Urza Saga would be good. And then we can play uh, Void Waka. Or oh, are we getting Tron? Opponent's mulliganing to five. If we're up against Tron, then our dream world is lands, Void Walker, thought seize. <laughs> Voidwalker, Voidwalker scam, old border Voidwalker scam. But there's two things that would be good to draw. One is just drawing a land, because once this Urza Saga sacks, we're gonna be sad. The other is drawing a, a way to reanimate the grieve. Well, let's play a land and thought sees you. Do we even care about Grist? We have Pithing Needle. 
Actually, yeah, that's this makes the most sense. So take the young wolf. Yeah, I think this is fine because this means this means we can just uh, thought seize the bowmasters and pithing needle the grist, and we have effectively dealt with our opponent's entire hand on turn two. Oh, uh, bonnet windswept teeth. We would still not mind drawing a land here. It would be sweet. Shrieking affliction. Well, we got to play the Urza saga. Thought seize you, bowmaster, pithing needle. Uh, opponent, gonna crack the. <laughs> that is the right play because we could have named Windswept Eath, although I have I have fallen prey to that many times in the past. <laughs> I think oh, there's no way they're gonna name my fetch land and then they just name it. Uh, we're naming we're naming Grist anyway. Okay, we really would like to draw land next turn. That would be the best. A land that makes black mana and lets us do Urza Saga stuff. Because remember, this saga is gonna sack itself. Uh, opponent land and cracks it. And there's a wall of roots. Come on, land. Land, maybe? Feign death. All right, we'll take up the Urza Saga. I mean, I guess this is also kind of okay. So we can, maybe it's Shrieking Affliction. I kind of feel like we got to keep this Void Walker for if we ever draw a Swamp. Although Shriek, uh, we're going to be able to get a rack next turn. Yeah, I think we do it this way. Let's pitch the Shrieking Affliction. Just because we're up against Yogg and, uh, and their combo involves a graveyard, I think we have to keep the Feigned, uh, or we have to keep the Void Walker. Well, this works out. So take the Court of Calling. Fain death the grief. And opponent is officially empty handed. We have a we have a grief still. Opponent has no cards in hand. If we draw land, we get down Voidwalker. Worst case, we get a rack next turn to start burning. What's the scariest draw? Land into land into Yogg is probably the scariest. Dryad Arbor, that's a land. Alright, Dad, can we draw a swamp, please? Augur of Skulls. Well, that's something at least. Uh, so float a mana, lose our saga, get a rack, play an Augur of Skulls. We still would really like to draw <laughs> draw another Black Source, play the Augur of Skulls. Opponent can't block it, but they'd have to lose their Dryad Arbor. I think our opponent's way back into this game at this point is finding, finding Yogg to draw cards. Uh, opponent down to 14. And then do a little racking down to 11. If our opponent ever gets cards in hand, we can auger them away. So the rack should be on for the rest of the game. I guess our opponent still doesn't have, wow, they just played the land. Okay. Oh, if we draw land for Voidwalker, I think we pretty much seal the deal. Grief. Well, go to combat, do some attacking. Technically, our opponent doesn't even have double black at the moment. So we lose our auger. Opponent goes to seven. This means grief is actually just lethal next turn. Opponent down to four. The rack is a clock, isn't it? Opponent delighted halfling. Okay, that lets our opponent block. Can we just draw a rack? Can we just draw a rack? Can we draw a rack? Liliana. Well, okay. Attack with the grief. Kill the halfling. Opponent goes to one. Yes, we would like the halfling to die. Wow, we're kind of doing this with one mana as well. And I don't think our opponent has a draw that gets them out of this. Like, I think we just rack locked them, opponent. They need to deal with the rack and they need to deal with the grief. And they can't play a Yogg. GG, scam rack. <laughs> opponent scoops it up. Wait, is, is this like just busted? Is the rack busted all of a sudden again? Uh, Leyline of the Voids in. Potentially fatal pushes in. Doofy Void Waka in. What do we go down is the question. How do we find room? How do we find room for all these cards? How do we find room? So Liliana's a bit sketch. Doesn't work well against undying creatures. It is technically removal, but they have a lot of... Do we cut all the Lilianas? Liliana's probably just bad in this matchup. Uh, all right, cut the Lilianas. Go down the Funeral Charm. Pithy Needle I think we need because it stops Yogg and Grist. Could cut Wrench Mines. Wrench mine has some very good disgusting art. I guess that is literally his mind being wrenched out of his head. Uh, what is the sound of one head snapping? <laughs> oh, old school magic. Um, you know what? Let's just go like one wrench mine. You know what? Let's go down one feign death. That's fine. Go down one feign death. A little less likely to do the scam thing, but whatever. Well, opponent, you're on the play this game. So we got ley lines in our deck now, which we would really like to have in our opening hand. This is a ton of lands and Urborg is already a mulligan. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna go to six. Well, this will keep. We could put the Undying Malice to the bottom, but then we don't have any scam possibilities. Yeah, let's, let's put one Shrieking Affliction to the bottom, I think. Start with a, start with a Ley Line. Can you beat a Ley Line? I mean, obviously they can. 
they will be prepared. Opponent deleted halfling. Sure. Schweep. Well, play the swamp. And thought sees you. Take the Eldritch Evolution past the turn. All right, so opponent doesn't really have anything good in hand. We're not really doing much at the moment. The downside of Shrieking Affliction is it is tricky to turn on. You gotta get exactly one card, exactly one card in hand, one or less. The rack at least, if our opponent's at two cards, does a little something. I guess the upside of Shrieking Affliction is it does three damage no matter what. When sometimes the rack is like two or one. All right, opponent plays a wall of roots. I mean, we're kind of hoping they dump their hand because then it turns on our stuff faster and another wall of roots. We could use a uh, draw that does things though. You know what would be sweet is that wrench mine we sideboarded out. Get those last two cards. Mishra's fat. I don't think we play the Shrieking Affliction yet. The Shrieking Affliction doesn't trigger. And it tells our opponent, okay, I gotta keep cards in hand. So I think we're better off waiting till our opponent's at least at one card in hand before playing it. So it's kind of a scary turn. Our opponent has a lot of ramp. They have a ton of mana. Core to Gilded use, okay, honk, honk. I mean, if our opponent has only mana, that's fine. As long as they don't have a way to get <laughs> an actual threat, like a Yogg. If they find a Yogg, even with Leyline, Yogg has a lot of value. Do we play a Shrieking Affliction? The Gilded Goose kind of undoes it, doesn't it? I mean, if they attack, we are gonna... I think we Mishra's Factory. This, I think, means that our opponent drew Fatal Push, but we're kind of okay with this. Uh, fire it up and block. If they didn't draw Fatal Push, then... <laughs> then it's a freebie. Dryad Arbor, sure. Ooh, they drew cord to get Yogg. Oh. All right, well, this is the literal. Wow, okay, that is quite literally the worst way this could go. <laughs> not even, not even a little close. And yeah, now we're probably just done. Pony can't combo, but we're never gonna turn on our Shrieking Affliction now in a million years. Augur of Skulls, not playing that because it dies to Yogg. That is what makes Yogg so powerful. Two things. One is when Yogg hits the battlefield, you pretty much win the game. Second thing, you get to play like 12 of them. There's just so many Yoggs with Eldritch Evolution, Court of Calling. Like we did some thought seizing. We got some stuff out of our opponent's hand. It just didn't matter because, <laughs> because they have so many chances to draw into another one. Oh, bone it gets and hits us. Yeah, our, our luck might be up. There is good news though, which is we're on the play next game. I guess it starts with, all right, so play the land, play Augur of Skulls. I mean, Fatal Push means we can try to kill Yogg. The problem is our opponent's gonna draw an ungodly amount of cards and probably find another Yogg. All right, so opponent's gonna kill the Augur. All right, well, I mean, Fatal Push the Yogg. See how much our opponent sacks. Okay. Wow, they drew the Besaju. Sure. Opponent gonna sack a wall draw a card and sacks a halfling draws a card. I mean, I guess our opponent does have non yacht cards in their deck, so it's not impossible that the oh, they drew into another one. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if our opponent hadn't hit another, didn't hit another yog, they would have kept drawing to find one because that's <laughs> the one card in their deck that matters. We're gonna get a gomes, gets in for one, sure. Down to 13, we draw, okay. Urza Saga is good. This is our best permanent answer to Yogg, honestly. Like Urza Saga getting the Pithing Needle, that is a way that we just don't get Yogged anymore. All right, pass the turn. One, two, three, they can't court for Yogg, right? Not at the moment. Cracks the Catacombs. Still gonna try to wait until we can actually trigger Shrieking Affliction to play it. It just like sends such a clear message like you need to hold cards in hand. So I think we got to wait until until our opponent is not doing that to play it. All right. Well, opponent didn't draw into the Yogg. Gets and hits us. We could use that. We could use a big draw here. Could use a big draw here. Something to get on the battlefield before the Yogg comes. We draw wrench mine. All right. So we trigger the Urza Saga. Obviously, our opponent doesn't have anything great in hand, right? Or they would have done it. Well, let's play Shrieking Affliction. I think we Shrieking Affliction, wrench mine to get rid of the last card. This means we're not making a construct, but I think it's worth it. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. Oh. 
I didn't really have force on our my radar. So a little bit of a punt there, actually. We should have we should have played things in the opposite order, and then they couldn't have blown up the shrieking affliction. Although, since our opponent has the force, I don't think it actually I don't think it actually would have made a difference in how the game played out. Oh yeah, that that is a blowout. Another Urborg. We won't early scoop, but I'm not sure there's a way we cannot lose this game at this point. Well, as we said, our opponent, they know that Graveyard Heat is good against their deck, so they are overloaded with answers to, uh, answers to enchantments and artifacts that can hate on the graveyard. Oh, wow, boy. Okay, sure. Sure, 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 sure. Well, 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 well. Do we want to change anything else? We might want the bring the Fane Death back in. Go down what? Let's go down one Augur. Let's run it like that. We really, now since we're on the play, we would really like the Scam Draw. That would be, that would be the best. Scam Draws, Void Walkers, Urza Sagas. Those are, those are things we really need. So we got to shut down the Yogg. Like that's, that's basically the game. We need to keep Yogg from doing its thing or else we're not going to be able to win with the racks because Yogg draws so many cards. So that's, that's essentially the entire game. We have Urza Sagas literally for days. We have a Thought Seize. We have multiple rack effects if we never get our opponent empty handed. All right, opponent keeps, well, we're going to play a Swamp and start with a Thought Seize you. Court of Calling, Strangle Root guys, the Sage you and Wall of Roots. Take the Court of Calling. Overgrown Tomb. And passes. We draw a Swamp. We'll, we'll play the Urza Saga. Pass the turn. If our opponent besages it, they besage you it. I mean, I guess one way to beat all the artifact aid is just overload with so many artifacts and enchantments our opponent can't possibly kill everything. Which might be the, the technique we're going for this game. Opponent, Blooming Marsh. Oh, that's a that's a new one. Place a Wall of Fruits. Well, do we want to start getting in damage? Probably. Uh, let's run out of Bowmasters. Ping ya. Untap. Trigger Saga. Play a Swamp. Go to combat. Hit ya. Oh, opponent. Down to 18. Yeah, let's just pass. So if we actually get to Ultimate This Urza Saga, I think... I think we go for Pithing Needle here. Opponent Forest. Wow, they just top deck Shieldred. Okay. I mean, that's obviously not good for us. Well, we will make a construct. Untap. They're going to besage you. Okay. So we'll make a construct. Get a swamp. Well, that actually kind of worked out, didn't it? Um, Fatal Push Shieldred. Get drained. Urza Saga. The Rack. Attack with everything. Well, here we come. Here we come. Do they? So we know a decent chunk of our opponent's hand. We know there's a Peatland and a Strangleroot Geist. We know two of the three. Do they find a Yogg is the question. Opponent, no damage yet. That Fatal Push was timely. The Shieldred would have really shut down our attacks. Pretty, pretty good. All right, Vern Catacombs. Elven Chorus. Look at the top card of your library. You can play creatures off the top of your library. Creatures can tap for a man of any color. Sure, sure, sure. Opponent oh, passes. Well, take up the Saga. Play the Factory. Go to combat. Swing with everything. Are they getting Dried Arbor to chump the Bowmaster? I mean, we get to hit our opponent for a lot of damage, right? Because we can make these into five fives. Urza Saga make a construct. Fire up the factory. Opponent goes to three. Play the Shrieking Affliction. And, uh, well, this is, this is it, opponent. This is it. Win the game this turn or blow up all of our stuff. I feel like we're... <laughs> I mean, we are pretty far ahead, but our opponent is a combo deck, so that doesn't necessarily mean we win. Sacks it to draw a card. Desperation. We didn't even scam them this game. There was no scamming. This was just this was just straight up racking. Young Wolf of Paradise, thanks to a uh, Elven Chorus. Interesting to see this card showing up in sideboards. An opponent cannot beat it, and they scoop it up. And uh, we're up to three and zero. We're up to three and zero with the scam rack. Okay, a rack might be back. That's already that's already a little snack for the bear. That's already a little snack for the bear. And uh, the five zero dream is still alive with scam rack. So uh, yeah, sweet sweet. It is eight rack scam rack time, and oh, this hand probably not going to do it. We're gonna mulligan this one. 
Too many lands, not enough scam. I don't know if it's very good, but we're gonna keep it. What do we, probably just streaking affliction to the bottom for now. Yeah, I think we're on this weird <laughs> auger of skulls and void wa oh god. All right, that's a bad sign. Uh oh, living end. Ugh. Okay, 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 okay. Well, it's unfortunate that our opponent has gemstone caverns because that means they're gonna get things in the graveyard uh, before we can play Voidwalker. All right, so this is pretty bad. Pretty, pretty bad. Opponent, cycling, cycling. We draw grief. So play Urborg. So play Voidwalker, I think. I don't know if this is gonna work out. Do we scam with the grief? Yeah, normally if our opponent didn't have gemstone caverns, this Voidwalker would be great. This is a really tricky scenario, actually. So if we play Voidwalker, our opponent can cycle in response, living and win. We can grief, not scam, to get it in the graveyard. Okay, so I think here's what we do. Pitching Augur, I don't know if we're gonna scam. <laughs> we're gonna grief pitching Augur, and we're gonna look at our opponent's hand and decide if they have multiple cascade spells. So they can cycle the curator. They can also counter our scam. Our opponent's also short of land. Yeah, take curator. Ah, oh, but that's a curator in the graveyard. I don't think we can beat what's already in the graveyard. That's the issue. Yeah, we're gonna, I think we gotta try to scam. So opponent can force a negation, pitching the waker. Oh, well, they pitch the shardless agent, okay. So opponent forces, they pitch the shardless agent. They can wake her to find a land. The problem is, Voidwalker's great, but Voidwalker doesn't stop the stuff that's already in the graveyard. I mean, we're gonna play it. Opponent cracks a misty rainforest. Yeah, this gemstone caverns just really got us. Uh, opponent cycles. The gemstone caverns just really got us. That really good news is we do have ley lines once we go to sideboarding. But once our opponent finds a cascade spell, they just no, they found it already. Uh, grief. Okay, to take the Liliana, I assume. Yup. Passes. Go to combat. Hit you with the Void Walker. So now our hope is our opponent just doesn't find. Our opponent just doesn't find a cascade spell. I don't know if that's a realistic hope, but that is our hope. Opponent forest. Architects of Will, looking at the top of their deck to try to find the Cascade spell. Now play the Bowmaster, ping the Grief. Actually, I guess that was kind of silly. We should have pinged our opponent's face. That would have been a uh, that would have been better. I don't think anything we do here really matters. I don't think there's a way we can win this game. Well, play a Rack. I guess the question is, was there a Cascade spell on the top of our opponent's deck? So the opponent gets racked, down to 11. They got to look at three cards. I mean, if there wasn't a Cascade spell in their top three, then we're probably good here, actually. Opponent hits us to 17. Opponent passes. Are they waiting to our, oh, okay. So they had it, they're just waiting till our turn. Sure, sure, sure. So there's a the Violent Outburst. All that's exiled is a Grief. Sack the Void Walker. Choose the Grief. Opponent finds Living End. They get back all their stuff. We get back all our stuff. We Bowmaster our opponent. Wow, watch this one point of damage end up mattering. That would be so brutal. If we end up losing because we ping that Grief, I'm gonna be so sad. Because we have this Rex, so our opponent's taking three and they can't kill us next turn. So there actually is a world where All right, so cast this Bowmaster, ping our opponent again. Wow, there is a world where that point of damage ends up mattering. Opponent goes to 10. Opponent has nothing in hand. We lose our Augur. Opponent setting up the top of their deck. They get pinged. Grief does nothing. Violent Outburst resolves. We'll cast another Grief, and we'll pass the turn. Opponent goes to six. Opponent goes to combat. Opponent attacks. Because they can't block this. They take two from the rack. Both griefs have menace. Are we actually favored here? All right, opponent attacks, attacks. Attacks with one, okay. So we go to 13. We untap. We draw a swamp. We attack here. We can't really attack with anything else. Get in with the, get in with the void walker. Opponent goes to four. We will pass the turn. Opponent goes to combat. Opponent swings with everything because they have no option. Block here, block here, block here. So stuff dies. 
Opponent passes. Opponent has to stop this Voidwalker, right? Attack, attack. And opponent, oh my god, we somehow won that. Wait, is this deck just busted? Is this deck just actually busted? Oh my god. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This deck might actually be good. Okay. <laughs> How do we keep winning? There's been so many games where it felt like we just can't win, and then somehow we actually can win, and we do win. What are the chances? What are the chances? Uh, so we want all the Graveyard Hate. We want the Chalice of the Voids. Probably trim some Lilies. Run it like that. Okay, maybe 8-Rack is back and actually good. Ooh. I was wondering if we could... Well, I guess you can't get Chalice anyway. Yeah, we just Mulligan. Uh, okay. This hand's actually fine. Augur to the bottom. So we have the ley line, which is good. Our thought sees is looking a little worse. Ley line, ley line wars here, opponent. The sad gemstone caverns. Well, play a swamp and play the rack. Pass the turn. So we're gonna get a lot of, we can get a lot of racks. Does that actually let us win though? Opponent gets a stomping grounds. I mean, as long as the ley line's out, things can't go too bad for us. Fame death, well, Urza Saga, and pass the turn. We wouldn't mind like getting more real mana. Abonant, Sunken Ruins, and passes. Well, let's run out of Bowmasters. Ping ourselves, sadly. <laughs> Take up the Urza Saga. Well, I mean, we gotta play the Saga. We are not gonna have any lands left, are we? Go to combat, attack, and pass the turn. I mean, we're gonna have racks for literal days. Ooh, Foundation Breaker. Gotta be going after the Ley Line, right? Yeah, going after the Ley Line, okay. So this is pretty bad. This is very bad. Okay, so Opponent's Graveyard is back to being active. Well, we will make a Construct. Untap. We do draw a Swamp. Take up the Urza Saga. I mean, I guess we just make the Construct. Get a Rack. Play the Swamp, hit you for six. Oh, but our opponent can cascade now, right? Opponent can cascade now, and they just have to not go too low on cards. All right, opponent passes. I mean, opponent has to cascade now. We draw a wrench mind. Well, float a man, I guess. Get a rack. Go to combat. If only we could target our opponent, this would be so much easier. I thought there was literally zero chance of that working. <laughs> Okay, well, I guess sometimes they don't have it, and sometimes you uh, go 4-0 with, with 8-Rack. We're going for the 5-0 here with Scamrack. Okay, well, let's win one more. All right, we are going for the perfect 5-0 in a modern league with uh, with some Scamrack. 8-Rack in 2023. Apparently it's a scam now, but I guess that's a good thing. We have won some games with this deck that I felt like we had no chance of winning. I guess this is a point in the column for all those never scoopers out there. All the people in the comments are just like, never, never scoop, play it out to the bitter end. This league has been a good example of that because there's been at least two different games where I felt like, okay, our odds of winning this are like, I don't know, 3% or something really low. And we ended up winning them all. Can we get the perfect 5-0 with Scam Rack? Can we get the Scam Rack 5-0? This hand, we're up against Jingatha. I mean, this is fine, right? Like, we're not scamming, but this is a good fair hand. A reasonable fair hand. We can kill a Ragavan multiple times. We had the Bowmasters. A bonus starts with the Inquisition. I assume they take Thoughtseize. That would be my guess, but we'll see. Maybe it's Bowmasters. It really depends on our opponent's hand. All right, takes the Thoughtseize. That was my that was my first guess. Fain Death. All right, well, Swamp you. Fain Death is nice. That does open up the possibility of drawing a Grief, or we can potentially use it to protect a Bowmaster. I mean, at least we're not going to get Ragavan. Ooh, opponent also doing Saga things. Sure. Chromatic Sphere. Okay. And Thoughtseize. What is our opponent doing? All right, takes the Bowmasters. I think our best draw here is just grief, honestly. Well, we'll settle for a thought, uh, thought sees, that's fine. Thought sees you. Ren and Fatal Push, but we'll definitely take the Ren. Do we wanna play our own Saga? Probably. Yeah, let's play the Saga. So like, the worst case scenario is what, they dash a Ragavan? Abonent. Maybe we get to see the power of Funeral Charm. I think the upside of getting down the Saga, apart from being able to make our own constructs is getting to the racks. There's a rack. 
Well, play a swamp. Now this is super interesting. Do we even make a construct here? Now I'm not sure that we do. It might be better to like play the rack, funeral charm make you discard at some point. Yeah, let's let's play the rack, get our clock going, pass the turn. So we can fatal push the Urza Saga token. Opponent cracks a bloodstained mire. I guess the question is going to be what do they what do they tutor up with the saga? All right, opponent's going to make a construct. It's a 2-2. Two, two. Opponent can untap. They take two from the rack down to 11. We're mostly worried about lifelink. That's the that's the biggest concern. Opponent's going to make another construct. Well, let's see what they find. Hopefully not lifelink. All right, opponent gets a lifelink. Well, we get to fatal push the big construct, the bigger construct. This lifelink is an issue, though. Funeral charm, make you discard. So we needed our removal spell, I guess, for this construct. Bowmasters. Well, play Bowmasters. Ping ya. Saga, get a rack. Ah, I don't think this can outpace the lifelink construct, though. The Shadow Sphere. The Shadow Sphere is a problem. Put it down to nine, put it down to eight, but they're going to start gaining back for a turn with Shadow Sphere, and we don't have a way to stop that. Ah, I mean, I guess that's fair. We we have won some Urza Saga games. I guess it's fair that we lose to an Urza Saga. Yeah, Shadow Sphere is pretty good off Urza Saga. If it wasn't for Shadow Sphere, we'd be in great shape here. Opponent. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we need to draw a Fatal Push. Opponent gets in for four. Yes, just undoes all of our work so quickly. Fatal Push, Fatal Push, Fatal Push, another Undying Malice. Well, go to combat. Hit you with the Orc Army. I mean, I guess, I guess we start blocking with Bowmasters and Feign Deathing because we're not doing anything else. Opponent takes zero. Shadow Sphere. Our 5-0 Dream. Is our 5-0 Dream dying in the last round to Shadow Sphere of all cards? <laughs> kind of feels like it. Opponent goes to combat. Opponent. Wind takes with a 4-4. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, we will block. I mean, we could still draw Fatal Push. We could still draw Fatal Push. Drawing Fatal Push would make things much better. All right, Undying Malice. Opponent still gains four. They're also holding cards to play around the racks. Our opponent's playing this correctly. All right, Bellmasters comes back, pings ya, grows the orc, cracks it. I mean, we do have two two twos. Maybe we can block this at some point. Ren gets back a saga, unfortunately. Oh, Liliana, if only we had a land. If only we had a land. Ah, uh, this is tricky now. Well, I think we have to kill the Ren. This is not good, but we have to do it. The Ren just puts too many cards in our opponent's hand, so these racks are never going to trigger. Opponent takes zero. So if we draw land and can Liliana away this construct, there might be some very, very, very slight hope. The problem is they have another saga now. Yeah, that's going to make more constructs. We drop to seven. Voidwalker. Well, we'll play the Voidwalker. When it's all the way back up to 17. Yeah, I think we're just dead. Oh, Shadows be yeah. Losing to Jund in 2023. Boy, this is, <laughs> this is so funny. This is like the 2023 version of 2015 modern. Like, <laughs> Eight rack versus Jund, except they're all about Urza Saga and not playing any of the traditional Jund cards, and we're all about scamming <laughs> to try to make a eight rack actually work. Oh, they have two. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Opponent double bowmaster, and fair enough. <sighs> How do we fight this? So break the ice technically can kill Urza Saga. I don't know if that's a, a realistic plan. I mean, I think in our ideal world, we do scam things, right? That's that's what we'd like to see. The wrench mines actually feel very bad because our opponent's playing a bunch of artifacts in their deck. So when wrench mine is discard a card, it's like actively bad. So I don't think we can afford to play two wrench mines. We might need the other Void Walker. I don't think we're actually going to break ice. That's probably a bit, just a little bit too deep. What's our last cut? How do we not lose to you, Urza Saga? That's the that's a real question. That's the real question. We even had double rack that game, but our opponent just that life gain. Ah, oh, Shadow Sphere. OP, OP. Is Shadow Sphere the current best equipment in Magic? I, it might be, right? Like, what else? What else is competing with it? I bet it's Shadow Sphere. I never thought of that before, but I think Shadow Sphere probably is the real choice for best equipment in in all of magic right now, or in modern right now at least. What else is even competing with it?
So one land. Yeah, I think we got a mulligan. Oh no, our luck is running out in round five, going for the five o. I I don't think you can play this deck afraid. You gotta, you gotta go for it. Oh God, okay. We will keep, uh, unfortunately. We'll put a Feign Death to the bottom and a Fatal Push to the bottom. And, whoo, this is gonna be a tough one. Swamp go. Oh, the 5-0 dream, we were so close. Blood Crypt and discard. Wow, so they're just gonna shit down our sagas? That's not fair. <sighs> magic gods, magic gods, are you serious? Are you serious, magic gods? <laughs> oh. oh, come on now. <laughs> I don't even think we can play the Urza Saga, right? It just dies, is that how this works? Land your opponent's control. Lose all land types and abilities, and they gain and a man of any color. I'm pretty sure it just dies. Is there any reason not to play it and find out? I know it dies with Blood Moon. You know, I'm gonna play it. Let's see. Yep, <laughs> it dies. <laughs> As expected. I guess we could have held it to trigger revolt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a, what a nightmare. This league had went so well up until this round. That's just the rub it. So we multiply our opponent. <laughs> our opponent plays turn one Alpine Moon and we draw Urza Saga the following turn. All right. Uh, I think this is too late to matter, but grief. Boom. Pitch this Liliana. We're doing our thing. It might be turn four, but that still is a turn. Fable the Mirror Breaker, Alpine Moon. Well, um, we'll take the Fable the Mirror Breaker. We'll feign deck the Grief. I mean, if there's a tiny bit of good news, it's that our opponent's hand's not actually that good. The bad news is our opponent gets to do Urza saga -y things, though. So, as we saw last game, two constructs into lifelink is, is a problem. Oh, boom, it cracks it. So, our opponent's hand is literally all lands at the moment. But, Urza saga is doing Urza saga things. So, I think what we need to have happen here, and I don't know if it will, but I think our best bet is... So, opponent's gonna do the same exact thing as last time, I expect. Get the lifelink. Yep, play the Blood Crypt, untapped, okay. Oh, you gotta be kidding. <laughs> All right, I guess we can't complain because we just crushed everyone in the first four rounds, but wow, this is a scenario where literally anything that could go wrong for us is going wrong for us. <laughs> <laughs> we finally, we finally scam on turn four and our opponent top takes the lightning bolt as our one draw when they have all lands in hand. No, that wasn't one of the lands. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Well, the deck, the deck performed really well. The deck performed really well. Looks like we're ending with a four one though, rather than the five oh. We still get to open a bunch of treasure chests, which is cool, but uh, yeah, there's... It's almost funny how many just every tiny little thing. I mean, that's magic for you, right? But like every possible little thing that could go wrong. They play the Alpine Moon. The next turn we top deck the Urza Saga. We finally get the Grief in play. They have nothing in hand. They top deck the Lightning Bolt. We doing nothing. They top deck the second Urza Saga. It's just one of those cases where uh, <laughs> where everything is just lined up in the, the literal worst possible way for us this game. <laughs> It's like getting hit by lightning several times in a row, I think. The equivalent of getting hit by lightning several times in a row. Those are the worst. The 5-0, like losing the 5-0 in round five, that's the that's a brutal one. Losing the 5-0 in round one, you never even know. You're like, oh, my deck did great. I lost the first round and won four in a row. The one that hurts though is when you're 4-0 and you're like, oh, I'm I'm actually there. I'm gonna get that trophy. And then you and then you lose. That's the that's the painful one. That's the painful one. About it. Trying to learn how to tap the Urza Saga. Realizes they must first let the trigger resolve. <laughs> well, well done, opponent. You have achieved your goal. No, you do something else. You can't be serious. Is this Ren and Six? That would be the Oh! <laughs> yes! At this point, at this point, I think I'm rooting. I'm rooting for it. <laughs> This is like one of those uh, <laughs> one of those shuffler truther games where where you see the people on arena like oh, I won I won too many times in a row and then and then arena just made me lose because wizards wizards wants everyone to have exactly a fifty percent win percentage they make more money that way somehow I don't understand how but there there is a way somehow that that makes them more money but it's one of those games where like. <laughs> 
<laughs> if you're prone to conspiratorial thinking and you think there's some lassie employee that's like pushing the buttons, this would be the buttons they'd push. They're like, oh, draw this. Okay, draw the bull. Yep, yep. We'll give them the Urza Saga now that there's an Alpine Moon. Oh, you played a 1-1? One -one? Let's have them top deck the, the red. I don't even know why we're playing this one out, actually. Like, we're so... We're so, you know why we're playing this out is because there's, been, like I said earlier, there's been several games this league where I felt like we couldn't win and we did win. So we're gonna, we're gonna play it out. We're gonna play it out until we are literally dead on board, which actually is probably this turn unless we top deck. Shadow Sphere, sure, sure, sure. Opponent passes, Orcish Boom Masters. Hey, I mean, technically that doesn't actually keep us alive, does it? I don't think so. But I mean, we're playing it out to the bitter end. We're playing it out to the bitter end. Opponent, Urza Saga takes it up. And a thought sees, yeah, that makes it even even less likely. Yeah, I think we are just literally dead now. Play the Bowmasters. But now our opponent can, yeah, now they just know they have lethal, right? So they can rend the Bowmasters, they can make another construct, attack us, and then they can sack this for two more damage. Pings the Bowmasters, makes it. This is playing out, I'm a, I'm a prophet. Oh, I'm not a prophet. <laughs> I had the fatal push, so I didn't even need to ping the need to ping it. All right, yeah. Well, the deck was pretty sweet, and we get five treasure chests to open. That last game was <laughs> almost hilariously brutal. Like it was so many things went wrong that it was actually actually kind of funny, honestly. Well, let's open these treasure chests and see uh, see what scam rack gives us. Chest number one. Ooh, oh. Actually, hilariously, so this uh, this snuff out, you see this, you're like, oh, a common. I don't want a common in my treasure chest. This is actually, I, f I believe, like incredibly expensive. Snuff out, it's like in Legacy De uh, Death Shadow, which is very popular right now. Uh, so I guess it's, I guess it's only, uh, only eight, eight ticks, which is actually still very expensive. The regular uh, mask one is over 10, but still eight ticks is pretty good. What about this card, Calamity of the Titans? These cards are weird. <clears throat> the commander precons, some of the cards, some of the cards come in a treasure chest and you can also buy the precons. Meh, still over, still over a tick. All right. Well, I mean, considering a chest is worth like two ticks and we open like 10 ticks, that's a, or maybe like eight ticks, that's still a win. Chest number two, High Priest of Penance. Oh, I remember thinking this card could be sweet and <laughs> it never, Never worked out. Turned out that it was actually just super hard to, to make the ability work. Having your 1-1 be dealt damage repeatedly, not as not as easy as you might think. <laughs> actually a little bit challenging. Chest number three. Ooh, aw, aw, I was, that shieldred does look pretty sweet. It's not the one we were hoping to open value-wise though. We opened the we opened the wrong shieldred. This shieldred is, uh, is worth about three ticks. Shoulder of the Apocalypse. I, mean, I guess it's only like 20 ticks now. What about Tasha's Hideous Laughter? That does he play, right? And it's from an unpopular set. Oh, it's actually worth like two and a half ticks too. All right, two more chances. Can we open a complete set? Oh, Narky, Fable Singer. I'm actually glad I opened this because I don't really want to buy the, buy the Commander Precons, but this is a pretty sweet Commander. I don't know about the Saga thing. I don't think I'd build a Saga deck with it, but uh, an Enchantment Aristocrat Sack deck sounds uh, pretty sweet, actually. So man, no, maybe we'll play. We've been, wow, it's like the build the deck, uh, the build the deck chest. We even got a, a Femia, which actually works pretty well in Narky since you can sack your enchantments and then eat them with a Femia to make two twos. I don't know why we want two twos, but still like. Yeah, it could be a thing. All right, one one more to go. Last chest. Come on, one ringer complete set. That's what we want. Hidazugu and Kiri and Soul's Majesty. That is scam rag for modern. And I gotta say, <laughs> the deck's actually pretty sweet. It worked a lot better than I actually expected it to work. So maybe in some sense we shouldn't be surprised because we know that scamming with grief is a powerful thing to do in modern, but I really like this. Like I mentioned during one of the games, I feel like this is the new way to do competitive brewing in modern. Uh, the format's gotten so powerful because of the Modern Horizons 2 cards, Lord of the Rings cards, Modern Horizons cards, even just power creep and standard sets, that uh, it's much harder to brew with outplaying some of the good cards these days. I feel like this is one of the one of the ways to brew and be competitive is you play some of the good cards, like the Grief and the Undying Mail. <laughs> 
I don't know why I'm calling Undying Amaz a good card, but you know what I'm saying. You play something powerful for Modern Horizons, but you use that to support something pretty janky, like trying to win with 8 Rack in 2023, and it was actually pretty successful. I mean, we're playing Augur of Skulls, of all things. Like, sure, we're doing scam stuff, but half of the time we're scamming Augur of Skulls. Augur of Skulls? Who plays Augur of Skulls other than Pauper players? So I really like how, uh, how this deck played. It actually felt pretty competitive. It was pretty fun. Rack is just, look at that art. It's such a nostalgic, cool, unique card with a sweet play style. So it's really sweet to see that Rack can still be competitive in 2023. Sure, maybe it's gotta be a scam now, but even then it's still worth it because the card's sweet. So anyway, that is the eight Rack. Except it's a scam now. That's been our deck for today. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed our almost 5-0 that last match, my God. But I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I will talk to you soon.